Hello, in this video, we're going to start talking about how we can check if there's a value in a tree. And so I'm starting with the same code as last time. I have my node class. And <clears throat> where we wrapped up last time, we were working on this dump method that would recursively print off um, all the nodes in the tree. And, um, and basically, we would do something for our own node and then do a recursive call on both sides. And the strategy is going to be similar uh, when we're kind of trying to search in, in the tree for something. So I'm going to delete this for now. And, um, and here's a picture of the tree we're dealing with. Uh, just to kind of put this into context, if I have some sort of list like this, if I say, you know, have A, B, C, D, um, and I say something like, um, you know, E and L, uh, that would be false. If I say something like D and L, uh, that would be true. And, um, and and you've already seen how well this is kind of a slow operation, right? I need to loop, loop over everything. Um, we've also learned strategies, uh, binary search, for making this faster. And um, what I'm going to first try to do is see if I can implement this with my um, with my tree, right? And so I can do operations like this. Um, so in the context up here, right? So if I'm looking at this here, um, I would like to be able to do something like, um, say, like, you know, is D in, in my tree? And, and right now it's just saying, well, it's not iterable, right? I haven't done anything to support that yet. But that's what I'm going to go for, right? So first I want to see how I can make this work. And then eventually I want to figure out how I can actually make it uh, faster. So, so the first order is, well, you know, make it work. And then the second order business is make it faster than order n. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, I'm going to write my some sort of method up here. I'm going to call it maybe contains. And I'm going to check if I have some value, um, let's say x. And, and so there's three possibilities, right? Like let's say I'm looking at a, a given node. Um, the lucky case is that node is exactly what I want, right? So if self dot value equals x, then, then I'm in, in business, right? Then I can kind of just return, well, I'll return true, right? Uh, otherwise, uh, else, uh, well, I can need to check both sides, right? I need to uh, kind of check, well, does this side have it? Or, or does this side have it? I, I might call these subtrees, right? So I can say if um, self.left, uh, well, I need to check if that's even not equal to none, right? So I can say not equal to none. Then maybe I can do something like this. Maybe I can say um, I'll return, I'll return true if, if the left side has it. Right, if it contains x. Um, otherwise, if my right hand side is not equal to none, then what? I'll return. I'll return whether that has it. Well, I'll return if my right hand side has it. Something like that, right? So, so let me let me try to debug this a little bit. Well, or try running it and see what happens. And so, here's what I'll do. Maybe I'll just add a print statement here. I'll print root.contains a and um, and I get I guess I meant to have two equal signs up there. So that's good. So if I have something that is at the root, it works fine. What if I have something like Z? Well somehow I'm not returning anything there. I'm getting none back. And so just trying looking through this code, I guess at the very end uh, I need to return false. Right, so so that's good. Right, so let me make sure I didn't break my original thing. So, so that's good. That's good. Um, what other values could I try? I guess I could try. Um, let me see if I can contain uh, B. So do I contain B? That that's correct. Um, what if I try to contain C? Let me try that. So so that's a bug, right? Somehow I'm not returning what I want to when I'm looking for C, I wonder what's happening here. I wonder which case I'm, I'm kind of getting towards. So, so maybe what I should do is I'm going to say, you know, check subtree at 
self dot value, right? So am I checking a or, or whatever, right? So let me, let me try that. So I, I'm checking the subtree at a, and then I check the subtree at b, and then I guess I check the subtree at d. And, um, and so that's kind of funny, right? I guess I never even, I never even checked this, did I? I never checked my right tree. And so I wonder when I'm kind of checking uh, A, why I never went right. So maybe let me try this. I'm going to say, check left uh, from, from this parent. And let me try this. I'm going to try to check right from here. Let me just see if I can figure out what's going on. Okay, so I'm checking the subtree at A. Then I check left, right? So I'm kind of checking left. And, um, and then I'm checking beneath B. B doesn't have a left, so I check right from B. And um, then what? So I kind of check the, the subtree at B. And then I'm, I must be returning, right? I must be getting false. Do you see what the bug is here? The bug is, is that just because my left subtree doesn't have it doesn't mean I know the final answer. It just means I haven't found anything yet. I can only return immediately um, if it has it, right? If, it, if, it's, if this returns true, well, then I can return true as well. Um, if this just returns false, you know, I need to keep looking. I need to check down here as well. So I have to write this a little bit differently. Um, and I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to kind of get rid of these, right? And instead of directly returning what my child says, I, I'm going to ask my child, right? Did you find it? Well, if my child found it, then I can return true. If my child didn't find it, well, then I can't return anything, right? I can't, you know, at this point, it'd be premature to return false, right? I have to check my right child too. So here I'm going to say, um, you know, let me try this. I'm going to say, if my right contains contains it, then I'll return true, right? So the only time I can really return false is if I ask both my children. Well, I've, I've checked that I don't have it directly. Neither of my children have it. And then finally, I can actually return return false. So I'm going to run that. And, um, and now I should kind of check all these cases again, right? Um, uh, you know, maybe what I'll do is I'll say something like for letter in uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, um, I'll print whether, I'm writing tests here, right? You should always do that. Try to think about what the interesting cases are. And I test kind of a lot of cases at once. I'm going to print whether the root contains, does it contain that letter? And, um, and I should, you know, I have A, B, C, D, so I should get four falses and two trues. And whoa, a lot more information than I really wanted there. So let's, let's do this. I get, um, you know, four trues and then two falses. Is that what I just said? But that's what I want, right? The first four letters, A, B, C, D, we have. The next two we don't. Um, so this seems correct. And, and so something I want to start thinking about is how much work needs to be done when I'm searching through here. <clears throat> and um, maybe one of the way that would uh, help is I, I could, you know, do these prints, right? And I can kind of see what I'm looking at. Um, what will actually be cooler is if I could print the whole subtree to kind of really visualize what's going on. Um, now, if I just do something like this, right? If I just try to print that, hey, I'm, I'm checking this node. Um, oh, and, and you know why it's not actually running anything because I didn't, I didn't kind of call anything. Root dot find let's look for D root dot contains D right I can't really see what's going on and so there's actually when you're debugging these things um, there's an alternative to the print method that I want to teach you and uh, this alternative is built into Jupyter and it can use things like this no normally something like wrapper SVG only works if I put my value at the end then it calls wrapper SVG automatically. But what I really like is something like a print method or a print function that can use this to display something uh, kind of more um, 
or interesting. And, and that's the display method. And, and let me just kind of grab it here. Uh, it is in from I Python dot core dot display. This is for stands for interactive Python. Um, I'm going to import the display function, right? So the module is called display. That's called display. And, and in a lot of ways, right, it, it works like a print, right? Hello, world, right? But the cool thing is that it can also be used to print a tree, right? So um, let's just try this. Let's say I want to print by root. So that works well. What if I want to print, you know, root dot left? That works well. What if I want to print root dot dot right? So I'm, I'm kind of hoping that I'm just going to print off this one thing here. All right, so I'm going to try doing that. And, and I don't quite get anything. I wonder, I wonder why if I kind of head up here. So it must be calling this wrapper SVG. And, um, and let me just kind of see if I'm drawing any edges, right? So I'm going to say like here, is this code even running? And, uh, and that code is running. So somehow it's not drawing anything. And, and you know what the problem is, is the only time I ever kind of draw anything with my graph, I'm calling g.edge, right? And, and so I guess if I have a graph with just one node, it's kind of another corner case right, that I have to think about. You should kind of get in the habit of thinking about all these kind of weird corner cases and testing and make sure you're kind of dealing with all these things. And, and so I think what I want to do here is um, when, I'm, when I'm calling this, right? I don't want to just draw the edges to my children but I should make sure that I am also showing myself. So I'm going to say g.node, and um, and then uh, I'm just going to show myself.value, right? So even if I don't have any any children or any parents, then then I'm still going to try and draw this down here. And so I can do that now. I can actually see while well, I have c down here, which is good. Okay, so I have this display function, and that was kind of a little bit of a roundabout thing. But what I'd really like to do is instead of printing myself, I'd like to display myself. Remember when I printed myself before it used, it kind of showed me these weird things. Uh, now if I can do this, here, let me just add a little bit more information here. I'm going to say check subtree. I'm going to run that. And I see that first I'm checking the whole subtree. And then I'm checking that left subtree. And then I'm kind of checking the left part of that. And then I actually found what I want. I found it. I found D, right? So let's think about this. Different. What are different kind of things? And I'm going to clean that up. What are different things I could look for? So if I look for A, I check the subtree, and I'm done. Kind of one step, right? What if I like? What is the worst thing I could look for where I would actually find it? I mean, obviously the worst thing is that. Um, I'm looking for something that's not even there, that I end up checking every node. But in this tree, what is the worst thing I, I could do? And maybe let me add some more nodes as, as you think about that. Um, so may, maybe what I'll do is I'll say something like um, uh, my C node. So I'll say root dot right dot left equals uh, node of E, root dot right dot left equals dot left equals node of f dot left dot left equals g and I kind of get this weird shaped tree maybe let me just add a little bit more in there so it's not quite so strange uh, maybe I'll say something like um, root dot right dot left equals node uh, h Um, and, and I just copied that right. I'm sorry. I wanted to say that right. I kind of put this backwards, didn't I? Okay, so I filled that at node, and I'm kind of adding these other things. You know, in the next lecture, we're going to talk about how to kind of more simply build these things. Okay, so I, I have this tree here, and I want to think about what would be the worst node to search for, what would take the most time? And kind of looking back at the code, when I when I call this, when I call this on my left subchild, 
this recursion happens on everything in the left subtree. So, so once I go left even one step, I do everything to the left before I do anything to the right. So, so that means I'm going to explore everything over here before I explore any of this stuff over here. And that's kind of true all the way, way down, right? So when I finally eventually get to E, I'm going to do everything to the left before I do anything on the right. And, and so I think what's going to actually be the worst case is if I'm looking for H. I think that H is going to make me do the most possible work. And um, is that true? Okay, so I have the whole tree. And then I'm going to go left to BD. So does BD have anything? No. Does D have anything? No. And then finally, kind of looking back up, I finally get to explore this right-hand side. Right? And so what do I get here? I get that whole subtree. And then underneath that, I go, I go left to the E subtree. Okay, and then from here, I'm going to go left first. So then I'm going to do F, G, and G. And then finally, I come back and I, and I do H. Right, so I end up having to look at every, every possible node to actually find what I'm hoping to find. And, um, and so kind of looking back up at this, I, I'm just wondering if there's any hope, right? Um, what, what makes things slow? I, I mean, when things are really deep, that's slow. I, I guess when it's kind of off on the side, I check last, it's slow. Um, if I want to be able to make this fast, uh, kind of consistently, um, there's a couple of things I may have to do. Um, you know, I, I end up checking the nodes in some order, right? And so how can I make sure that the, the thing I'm looking for isn't in the last possible node? Um, what I'd really like to do is to have some sort of way to kind of when I look at the top node, is, is there some way that I could say something like, hey, any sort of value is going to be to the left or any sort of value is going to be just to the right. I don't have to check it. And, and so maybe as an example, um, I'm going to kind of rename these a bit. I'm going to say that that's uh, B. I'm going to say B and D become, uh, wait a minute here. Yeah, so I'm going to say that. And I'm going to say this is A1. I'm going to say this is A2. Did I get that right? OK, great. And then, then over here, I'm going to call this like, um, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, and C6. Oh, not quite right, I guess. C6, right, like this. So, and let me just kind of get rid of this for a moment. So let's just look at the tree as it is. Okay, now what I see here is that I start with B, and B is in between the A's and the C's. And why is that helpful? Because, well, when I'm searching for it, if I know about that pattern, then I only have to go left or right if I can guarantee that. If I can kind of guarantee that everything that comes alphabetically before B is to the left, then I only have to check the left subtree if I can guarantee that everything that after B comes right, then I'll have to check that. So that's a potential optimization. Now, the other thing though is, is this optimization isn't going to help me very much if the tree is very deep, right? Because in that case, I kind of have to go all the way down, even if I know that it's going to be somewhere over there, if it's there at all. And so that's a problem too. So what we're going to do next time is we're going to try to set us up and see and I construct the tree in a way that whenever I'm at a node, I can kind of eliminate one side or the other, right? So I'm just going to kind of write these strategies down so we can be thinking about it. So strategy one, <coughs> can we um, rule out, um, you know, one subtree at each node we check? That's going to help us be fast. And then strategy two, uh, can we make the tree bushy and we'll try to define that a little bit better uh, but bushy is kind of the opposite of long and stringy long and stringy means that i have a bunch of nodes with one children and they form this long chain if i'm in that kind of situation and i'm searching for something like you know c5 or c6 
I'm not going to know until the end, right? If this is kind of what we say bushy or balanced, I won't have a lot of cases where these nodes just have one child. It'll kind of um, be short and wide. And if I do these two things, then I can, uh, I should be able to develop an algorithm for checking my tree and kind of quickly finding what I what I want to. So that'll be for next time. <coughs> I want to end with something a little bit less algorithmic, um, maybe a little more fun. And that is, can I say something like this? Can I say a2 uh, and root? And right now, uh, what Python is trying to do is it's trying to somehow loop over root to see if I can find it. Uh, but it turns out what I can do is I can just turn this into a special method. I can do this. Let me get rid of this. And, um, and I can call that special method here as well. Contains is a special method. And if I run this then, well, I have all my debug stuff, so I'm just going to get rid of that for a moment. I have the special methods contains. I can see, okay, A2 is in that tree. Was that true? Let me just kind of peek at my tree again. Yeah, there was A2. What about A3? Was A3 in the tree? Um, it was not. Okay, so next time we're going to learn about binary search trees, which are basically binary trees uh, designed to make this searching thing that I'm trying to do faster.